Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, even though we have strayed from the flock, even though we have disregarded and disobeyed the voice of our shepherd, he continues to seek after us. He calls out to us because he knows us and we belong to him. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning, I'm Pastor Scott Porath from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Eagle, Nebraska. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is written in Acts chapter 20, verses 17 through 35. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of, none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, 
Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At, th at that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today is from our Gospel lesson from St. John, the 10th chapter. Where do we turn when our security is threatened, when we're frightened by the world around us? In those times, God provides us with a wonderful image of his love for us when Jesus tells us that he is our good shepherd. In our gospel reading, we heard Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. Folks, understand that picture of what Jesus is talking about. In ancient times, several flocks of sheep would commonly be gathered together into one courtyard or a sheepfold. And in the morning, when the shepherd came to get his sheep, he would call out to them. Now, there might be any number of shepherds in the sheepfold at one time, each one calling out and gathering his flock together. Each sheep knew the voice of his own shepherd from being with him from time to time. The sheep would ignore the other voices calling throughout the sheepfold, and they would zero in on its own shepherd. And hearing the voice of their shepherd, the sheep would follow after him. Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. So how about you? Do you listen to the voice of Jesus and follow him? The scripture says that all of us like sheep have gone astray. All of us have listened to the wrong voice. The voice of our sinful flesh tells us that we alone are in control <coughs> and we know what is best for us. The voice of our old Adam tells us to look out for number one, that it's okay for you to be selfish. It's quite natural for you to rebel against the Lord your God. Sometimes we listen to the voices of our dying world that tells us, oh, just do it. Have it your way. The one with the most toys or the biggest house or the newest car is the winner. We listen to the voice of the devil. And he tempts us to ignore our good shepherd when he calls out to us with his word. The devil seduces us into thinking that we can live happily ever after without our good shepherd. Knowing that he can't snatch us out of the shepherd's hand, the devil lures us to leave the flock on our own accord. He wants us away from the protection of our shepherd. He does this by promising pleasure and freedom but in reality, he's prowling around seeking whom he may devour. And he especially preys upon the sheep that have wandered from the flock, and he drags them away to live forever with him in the agony of hell. And yet, even though we have strayed from the flock, even though we have disregarded and disobeyed the voice of our shepherd, he continues to seek after us. He calls out to us because he knows us and we belong to him. He knows us. He knew us before the creation of the world. He knew us when he knit us together so wonderfully in our mother's womb. Jesus has also called you by name in the quiet water and word of holy baptism. There, he cleansed you from all your sins and made you to be his child. He knows you even better than you know yourself. When Jesus tells us, my sheep listen to my voice 
I know them and they follow me. He's telling you that he desires to gather you into his arms, to cleanse you and to carry you home. For he has shown his great love for you. Your shepherd, Jesus Christ, laid down his life for you, his sheep. Like a sheep led to slaughter, he became the sacrificial lamb, the one whose blood was shed and paid for the sins of the whole world. He took all of your sin and death upon himself and he withstood the wrath of God in your place. He allowed himself to be forsaken by God, put into the jaws of the lion. He entered into the darkness of your death. Imagine that. The Lord of the universe lay in a borrowed tomb of lifeless corpse, corpse. But the good shepherd Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he continues to come into the midst of his flock to feed us, to bind up our wounds. And this he does with his holy word and sacraments. His sheep gather to hear the living voice of Christ in the public reading and preaching of his word where your good shepherd proclaims the good news of eternal life into the ears of his sheep. Here, your risen shepherd prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. And at this table, he gives to you his body to eat and his blood to drink for the forgiveness of all your sins, for life and salvation. And gathered at the throne of the Lamb, we already join all of the saints in a heavenly feast where the shepherd feeds and forgives us. Our good shepherd will watch over us and protect us according to his promise. And the day will come when he will return in glory and raise us and all the dead. And he will take all his sheep who have listened to his voice and followed him in faith, and he will lead them to heaven, where they shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I'd like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you're in the Eagle area, please join us at Emmanuel Lutheran Church on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. If you can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.